What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP with you do as a central sterile processor. Alright guys, today I want to talk about the inspection and testing of two common ortho instrumentations. Um, you have the Lexel um, Bone Cronjour and you have the Liston Bone Cutter. Now if you just at a quick glance, there are some very similar features to these instruments. Well, they're both used for cutting, um, different purposes of cutting, but this one is to kind of take bites and chunks off with the cup, um, with the cup jaw, as you can see. So this takes like tiny bites, and this one's kind of like the cut through a bone completely, right? Um, not to take chunks off, but to slice through the bone completely. Heavier jaw, okay, with the cutting edge, the blades. Okay, both of them are double action, okay? What double action does is there's two pivot points in the assembly that allows for a tighter, uh, a stronger bite force, okay, with minimal effort, okay, with less effort, okay? Um, they both have spring action um, uh, uh, capability um, to keep the jaw open. Um, these do come apart, um, so you, if you see this like this, you need to put it back together again. Um, and importantly with this with the inspections is that these have screws right there are screws that hold this double action in place now if these were um repaired before even a manufacturer you'll notice that these have been punched like a tri punch on all these right Let's see if i can show you right there Boom. that prevents the screw from backing up right um I guess the cons of that is that when it does go for repair, you have to put a new screw in there and some new punches, so there's a limitation of how many punches you can do with this, right? So you want to inspect them screws to make sure that they're flush on both sides, right? Inspection of all screws, okay? So where that spring action's at, you want to look at that screw there, make sure that that screw is not backing out and that there's no cracks emanating. This is a common crack point in this spring here because constant action back and forth you're going to get that okay same thing with this one here make sure that you look now this one as you notice the uh, screws have not been punched so it's important that you inspect to make sure that those screws are not backing out because if they are backing out and you don't notice it in the surgical field that screw can back out into a patient now what i will say is as for all the handymans out there, me included, okay? It is very, very tempting to see that screw back out and then tighten it up yourself. Do not do that, okay? Leave that to the trained professionals. That typically has to be tightened up to a certain torque. Um, and if it's backing out, then it may mean that the um, threads are worn out or something is worn out with the instrument, okay? Inspection for cleanliness, of course, you wanna use lighted magnification if need be, right, um, to inspect, especially where those screws are at, right, because that's a little indentation, so there might be some bio burden hiding there, so those are a good inspection point. Um, when you're sending these through the kind of the washer, it is very important to keep these open. Now, they sell devices to keep your instruments open. Please do not use another instrument you know, to keep your device open while it's cleaning because you can damage the other instrument, right? They do spell, sell specific um, devices to keep these instruments open so that you can get in there and clean um, manually. You can do this manually. And then when you place it through the automatic washer to keep that slightly open to get all that debris. So that is an important inspection point right there inside and then the inspection point in the actual jaws itself. Um, it might be a good idea to lubricate on your side. So grab some instrument milk and have your lube points there. So these are good lubrication points to keep this operating smoothly. So if it's sticking a little bit, you might just want to grab a, um, you can use the little instrument oil there or you can use the instrument milk to actually spray and articulate this device. The same goes for the Lexel Bonjour. You want to inspect um, in between. Again, the device keeps this open when it goes through the washer. You want to inspect where the little joints open and close. And this is a cup design. This is very, very common 
to see this come back and see a nice big chunk of bone in that little cup there. So great inspection point there. Okay, as you can tell that the handle has little ridges. You want to definitely look in between each little divot for handles and the handles for any bio burden on that as well. Okay, you want to make sure that it doesn't stick if you have to lubricate it, then so lubricate it. You also want to make sure that when you're inspecting, that when you're closing the jaw, that the jaw is not misaligned. You want a perfect lined up jaw. Okay, so you should be looking at that head on, making sure that that jaw is nice and secure and that there's no gaps on there and no dents or indentations on the jaw itself. For the listing bandage, the actual blade itself, and you're gonna wind up closing it and you wanna look at that distal tip to make sure that there's no gap in there, no gap in between all the way through. Okay, so it's a nice secure close right there. Okay, and again, you're only gonna wind up biting with the tip there, so it is okay to have a slight little gap at the very end, but it shouldn't be very prominent, right? Okay, um, so we've tested for cleanliness. We made sure that there's no defects or damage. Now. What about the function? How do we function test these devices? Well, if you have a handy little testing book like this, okay, you'll see that it tells you how to test it, right? Double action rondeur, right? You're gonna test it on these little bites here. And again, it tells you only a third of the jaw is what you're gonna test. So the jaw is actually, okay, even though the jaw is the limb from the actual knuckle up, the actual cutting of the device is where it divots, so the jaw is actually only that big. So dividing that in half and then dividing it in less than a half, okay? So a third is you have to go less than half and just divide that into three. So it's a very, very, very small portion of what you're gonna do here, okay? so. Um, you can go anywhere on this card. You don't have to follow the little outline at all. I usually typically see people follow those little imprints and <laughs> you really don't. Anywhere on here, you're gonna grab the distal tip right there, just like so. Okay, a third of the jaw and you're gonna apply force. And it's just sound like a hole puncher, you heard that? When you do that, you wanna gently tap because you see where the card is at? It's stuck in there. Make sure you remove that, right? Find it, remove it discarded sometimes it comes out nice and easy sometimes it don't and there's always little filaments that are left behind so make sure you gather that as well you want to do that a couple different times okay right there should sound like a nice clean cut there okay gather your material wipe your jaw blades and it's good to go all right for your bone cutters right it is the same exact fin here. The only thing is that three quarters of the jaw limbs should cut clearly. And there you go, there's your example right there. If you don't have a handy book like this, you can always talk to your repair company um, um, or your educator on site to see, called talk to the manufacturers to see how you test these. So three quarters of the jaw should be cut cleanly. So you're gonna grab it on an angle here to make sure that you're cutting completely. So let me see right here. So we're gonna go right here. Sorry, I can't see it. And you're gonna apply force. And it should sound like a nice, clean cut. You heard that bone, you heard that cut? That's good right there. That's a nice, clean cut. Okay, let's, let's attempt it on the other side as well. Sorry about the fumbling here. I got two index cards here, okay? I am actually left-handed, so you're gonna go ahead and grab here. And you're gonna cut and it actually flew. So that's another thing you wanna look at when material flies all over the place. Just gather your material. Again, wipe your blades to make sure that you've got none of the filaments there that goes into the tray. So I'm often asked, well Jesse, we don't have access to that nice little book you got. What can we use? Well, the standards in the training states that we should use an index card, right? There's your index card. You can do the exact same thing with those PCD cards. You can do the exact same thing, guys. All right, guys, and this is how you test and inspect the two common ortho instruments. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. Continue educating yourself. Till next time. Peace.